Hookie's author Miriam Van Ostreiter is back with her new series. Here is a recap of episode one of Marionetta. I've got a lot of thoughts on this comic. Let's dive in. Marionetta has a mesmerizing and ominous intro. The beginning already has us shaken with Julia, our protagonist, covered in blood and tears. We can't see anything clearly. The author strategically doesn't show us what happened. We're mentally and physically in the dark. What's going on? Is the stab person dead? Why is Julia dressed like that? How did this colorful circus turn into a crime scene? We're starting off on the right foot. I love how the author's not giving everything away. It's adding to the suspense. After this, we jump back in time to follow Julia and her friend Camille running after a bus. Shout out to all the hooky lovers, right? If you don't understand, don't worry, I got you. Hooky started with a similar scene, but this time the author is turning the tables. Instead of missing the bus like in Hooky, the story starts because they caught the bus. Just a heads up, if you haven't read Miriam's other webtoons yet, pause the video, add it to your reading list, and come back. Hooky's a bit simpler, but it's the starting point of this author's amazing journey. Her graphics and storylines have leveled up and she's putting more thought into her scripts. Experience really does make you better. But going back to Marionetta, the driver stops, letting Julia and Camille hop on and find place amongst the crowd. The scene might be chill, but we start peeling back the layers of this new world. The first thing that caught my attention was the dynamic between these friends. They're as different as night and day, but it actually works. Julia comes across as smart and no nonsense, someone with a strong sense of right and wrong. At the same time, Camille is the cutest and most lovable person on earth. And trust me, everyone on the bus is obsessed with reminding us how perfect she is. Also, I'm curious about these uniforms. I mean, they look like they're for a job or something, but we don't know for sure yet. I'm just assuming they work at the factory they were passing by, but they seem like they could be high schoolers too. There's a lot to figure out about this world, but for the moment, I can only say that it's like they all come from the same mold. The only person who seems out of place is this man referred to as an Akon person. What's got Julia so scared of him? Uh, okay, I get it. He is creepy. Something about him is just weird. But why is everyone so evidently trying to avoid him? Again, we are out of the loop about many things. We don't have much time to think about it though because the action is about to start. Everyone on the bus is hyped for the circus. Well, everyone except for Julia who is much more worried about work. Our heroine is lecturing everyone about their responsibilities but ends up going with them because of Camille. I get it, just look at Camille. How could she say no? So yes, they hop off the bus and start walking around the vibrant place. The artwork is absolutely mind-blowing. It feels like we're jumping into a new dimension. As any good storyteller, Miriam uses every opportunity to give us small hints. We focus our attention on a super strong man, a freckled acrobat, and a tamer surrounded by cute puppies. Looks like she's introducing some key players. Can't wait to see where they fit in the story. Plus, we also find out that magic is illegal and somewhat frightening. I'm 100% sure all this is important. I feel like a detective keeping track of clues. Of course, at this point, we aren't even surprised to see Julia having a tough time. On the other hand, Camille is loving every second of it and volunteers for a show. Here's where our characters make a huge mistake. They get separated, which is a recipe for disaster. I guess they don't have horror movies in this world. While her friend is off having the time of her life, Julia is just sitting on a bench complaining. As she waits, she can't help but overhear some kids picking on a poor clown. She helps him out, but not without giving him a piece of her mind for being weak. After this, she's determined to track down Camille, but let's be real, it's probably too little too late. Meanwhile, Camille meets with two members of the circus troupe and falls in love at first sight. Okay, this scene is giving me a lot to think about. At the start, I thought she was head over heels for the guy, but now I'm not convinced if it's him or the woman. Let me walk you through this. It's tricky because Camille runs into him and I bought into his knight in shining armor act. He extends his hand and smiles and Camille turns red and I didn't think twice, but after reading it all again, I realized that most of his shots are with the blonde woman and just when she walks by Camille blushes. Coincidence? I don't think so. I had a chat with our team and we came to the conclusion that she's into her. Also, it's not like the author hasn't written LGBTQIA plus characters before. What do you think? Let us know in the comments who you think Camille is falling for. Anyway, back to the story. Camille recklessly follows them. I mean, I'm rooting for her character, but I'm starting to question her intelligence or survival skills. And if that wasn't enough, she goes straight up to the circus crew to chat. Seriously? Why? When did it seem like a good idea to follow a couple of masked circus artists into a tent alone? I have to admit, I was expecting the worst, but I didn't anticipate what happened next. After entering the circus tent, Camille sees something she's not supposed to, a headless acrobat. For the first time, she has a normal reaction and tries to run, but she gets captured. The man she followed approaches with a knife and takes off his mask. Forget the knight, he's more like a straight up psycho. Camille begs, but there's no point. There, with a big grin and his third eye exposed, he says she saw too much. 
Is he gonna kill her? What a cliffhanger for the first episode. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Webtoon recaps. And let us know what Webtoons you want us to cover next.